Did you know frogs can eat mobs alive? Or that an iron golem is stronger than the warden? And here are 20 surprisingly powerful things in Minecraft. And hey, according to YouTube, no one's ever subscribed to the channel with the back of their finger. So if you're up to the challenge, whack the back of your index finger on that red sub button below. It's free and it ups out a ton. This carpet isn't real. Don't believe me? Well, try walking on it and see what happens. Yeah. Not the best ending. So if you'd rather set up this practical joke for yourself instead of falling for it, this is how you do it. Make some map art of your favorite color carpet, either by hand or search for a map making tool online. And then you place that new map art into item frames, which are on top of signs over a lava pit. And even if you don't use this for a death trap, this could make for a solid secret entrance to your next underground base. This is one of the fastest ways to kill the wither. And you don't even need a sword to do it. That's right, by using just the bedrock in the end and some high explosion power fireworks, you can spam those underneath and kill the wither in just a matter of seconds. Just make sure to spawn it in like this so that it gets stuck inside the bedrock. Otherwise, this method won't be nearly as effective. But do it right and we'll get ourselves our nether star in 10 seconds flat, all without taking any damage ourselves. Opening a chest next to piglins is a dangerous gamble, and breaking it doesn't work either. So instead, place a hopper underneath the chest and then wait for all the items to pour out. See, the piglins don't care if you open the hopper, so you can enjoy all of the riches that they drip feed out of the chest. And then, after that chest is empty, why not trade all of the gold that you found inside back back to the piglins. That way, they get to keep their gold, and we get to stay on their good side. The warden is a tough mob, but here's why the iron golem's even stronger. As this user shows, all we need is a setup like this to make a particularly effective warden prison. From there, the golem can reach through the blocks and deliver enough melee damage to take it down. Just make sure you save some ingots on hand to heal it up, since the warden's sonic boom attack can still go through the blocks. But even then, it is still impressive that a full health golem can take out a mob with five times its health without even breaking a sweat. This farm makes Enderman into a total joke. See, if you place some boats under a two block high ceiling like so, then any endermen that come running at you will just get stuck in place. From there, you don't even need to hit them, since they'll just suffocate in the blocks above the boats. So if you're looking for a cheap way to get some ender pearls, this is a lot simpler than all the redstone that it takes to build something like this. Plus, that's not the only shocking use we've got for boats, and we'll see that later in the video. Did you know you can land on a carpet without taking any damage? Well, you can't normally, but with a couple of blocks of powdered snow, we can do just that. Just place some buckets of these down at the bottom of your mine and then stick a carpet of your choice on top, and just like that, you're done. Which can also give us a way to have a safe landing in the nether, since water's completely out of the question there anyway. Stop using TNT for your traps, or rather, stop using TNT like this, because if you just add in a minecart like so, you can make your traps much more intimidating. See, with a powered rail, these TNT minecarts can detonate instantaneously. And since entity cramming doesn't affect minecarts, you can place literal hundreds of them onto the same block and make yourself your very own nuke. Just make sure that your PC can handle that much destruction. This glitch makes your shield 10 times better. To do this, just hold down the right click button while walking through a portal and then let go during the loading screen. Then when you load into the nether on the other side, your shield will still be in the guarding position, but you won't get the usual slowdown on your movement. And this will also work going the other way around. Just go through the portal again into the overworld and you'll enjoy the same effect on that side. So whether you're looking to easily raid a bastion or raid your friend's base, this glitch is necessary. Elytras are great, but getting the rockets is expensive. So lucky for us, this solution lets us reach liftoff without using a single piece of gunpowder. Just put a couple of mobs into this contraption here and use it to launch yourself literal hundreds of blocks away. Sure enough, having all those mobs bundled up creates a lot of potential energy. So when we start flying while we're inside the hole, we get pushed by all of them until we finally take off. And hey, even when you're not using it, this will double as a nice cow farm too. A drown with a trident is a scary thing, but a drown with a loyalty trident, that's the stuff of nightmares. As this user discovered, if you have a drown that generates with a loyalty enchanted trident, then you could trap it inside of a boat and create this monstrosity of forks. And frankly, I think the amount of entities here would be enough to lag out about any server that you put this on, proving that a being this powerful should not exist for a multitude of reasons. Here's how we can transform this biome in a matter of seconds. Using creative mode commands, you can set up a system to kill a bunch of mobs with entity cramming on top of a skulk catalyst, which then will cause the skulk biome to spread across the nearby blocks at record speeds. And if you're really feeling dedicated, you could even use a mob farm in survival to make this happen over there. And while I'm not going to explicitly recommend this, I do think this could lead to a pretty hilarious prank to use in your friend's base. Or if that prank is a bit too mean-spirited, this one's more of a harmless gag. Folks, meet the Bat Bomb. Now, while this bomb won't cause any damage to the blocks around it, it's sure to cause some emotional damage when it gives you or your friend a jump scare. To set it up, just spawn a bunch of bats on the bottom of the block. And since there's no limit to how many bats can cling to one block, we can get a bunch of the suckers just stuck on there. From there, break the block they're hanging onto, and they'll all break free and give any passerby a definite shot. 
shock. Just make sure your friend doesn't overcome that fear of bats and come back looking for vengeance. Here's how you can use a boat to make you nearly invincible. Sounds impossible, I know. But if you trap a creeper in a boat like this, then if you step inside the boat with the creeper, you'll only take one heart of damage from the explosion. Do this trick in front of your friends and it'll surely leave them pretty baffled about how strong you are. But I gotta give a fair warning, this only works if you're the one in the driver's seat. So don't say I didn't warn you if you try this in your hardcore world and it all goes belly up. If I were you, I wouldn't go through this end portal. And it has nothing to do with the end, but rather what we drop from the overworld. See, entering this gets you one thing, instant death. By dropping dripstone into it from height of 40 blocks or above, you can booby trap the end portal so that whoever goes through next gets instantly spiked. And this trap is so deadly that it even works the players wearing fully enchanted gear. So just in that case, make sure that your friends enter the end first. Let's face it, minecarts aren't very fast. Which is a shame because roller coasters are a ton of fun. So instead of a normal railway, place your rails like this for an extra speed buff. Now it might look silly, and the travel animation's definitely unique to say the least, but the speed boost that we can achieve more than makes up for it. You don't even need powered rails to do it. And honestly, the slowest part of the process might just be figuring out how to build all those weird circles, but trust me, it'll pay off. In Bedrock Edition, frogs are capable of swallowing a gold completely whole, which is a ridiculous sight to see, but it proves just how powerful these little guys are. And what's even sadder about it is that the goats don't even drop a frog light after they're swallowed, making their sacrifice for nothing. Though it's worth noting this only happens in a certain beta version for Bedrock called 118.10.26. A mouthful, I know. And since then it got patched out, so I guess that both goats and fireflies are unsafe for frogs to eat. Go figure. Instead of using boats, why not use dolphins? Crazy as it sounds, if you get a dolphin onto a lead, you can enjoy the dolphin's grace buff for however long your journey is. And to get even more out of this trick, try wearing some Death Strata 3 boots to give you that extra speed right across the seven seas. Because with just those two things, we can start to travel over 36 blocks per second. Just like that, you travel two chunks every second that passes by. That's some serious speed. Getting on the nether roof is a great help. There's plenty of space for farms, travel, and all without any of the lava or the actual nether. But breaking the bedrock to get there reliably is a finicky process. Enter this method by fallen breath. With just two pieces of TNT and a way to quickly place a piston, we can effectively break not one, but two pieces of bedrock with 100% success rate. And while this is most useful for getting to the nether roof, you could always use this to trap your friends in the void over in the overworld, if you're so inclined. In bedrock edition, it's possible to jump six blocks high without using any potion effects. Simply have your friend hold up a shield and then punch them repeatedly. Because if you have a wall behind you for support, you can use that knockback to launch yourself right up to the ceiling. And if you both have a shield on hand, you could each switch back and forth and use this to effectively climb up to build limit. Just make sure you don't punch them when their shield's down, or this whole thing could fall apart, literally. This is how far you can pull your friend with one fishing rod, and this is how far you can pull your friend with three fishing rods. And if you're anything like me, I was surprised to find out that you can pull people even further when you use multiple fishing hooks like so. And this could be super useful if the player that you're pulling up also wears an elytra, since then they can use that hype boost for a nice head start on their travel, and save themselves a couple of fireworks. And with that folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, alright?